This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2105, The Happiest Moments of Vacation May Not Be What You Think, by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who reads articles, book excerpts, stories, even student essays to you every day, including holidays, covering personal development or self-help, how to live your best and most meaningful life, and a lot more. It's always with permission from the authors or websites. We couldn't do this without them or without you, so thank you to them and to you for being here. And now let's get right to our post today and start optimizing your life. The Happiest Moments of Vacation May Not Be What You Think by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. If you recently braved airport security lines, crowded highways, and big crowds to travel with your family to a popular spring break destination, you know that vacation can be stressful. But it's also fun, of course. And we do it, overpriced blended cocktails and all, because it's an opportunity to bond with our families and create memories that last a lifetime. At least that's the idea, if not always the reality. A good friend of mine likes to say that traveling with kids is not a vacation, It's a trip. You might be looking back at your most recent vacation or trip with mixed feelings and asking yourself if the flight delays, credit card bills, and family squabbles were really worth it. First, know that you're not alone. Psychologists have coined the term post-vacation blues to describe the feelings of anxiety, stress, and fatigue that many of us feel upon re-entry into the routine of our normal lives. It's what leads us to think that we need a vacation from our vacation. Second, take comfort in knowing that happiness experienced from a vacation is not always associated with the time spent on the vacation itself. Research suggests that much of what makes us happy about a vacation takes place both well before and well after time spent on the beach in a distant locale. The point is, as I'll discuss, a vacation is not merely a moment in time, it's a series of moments that in totality can create happiness well beyond the two to four weeks per year that you spend living out of a suitcase. Planning for a vacation often leads to more happiness than the vacation itself. In 2010, researchers set out to measure the effect that vacations have on overall happiness and how long it lasts. The study published in the journal Applied Research and Quality of Life found that the biggest boost in happiness comes from planning a vacation, not taking a vacation. In the study, the effect of vacation anticipation increased happiness for eight weeks. In addition, Amit Kumar, PhD, who is a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business, found that when it comes to making experiential purchases, such as vacations, waiting is a positive state. According to Kumar, quote, it's a good idea to start planning that vacation ahead of time. We tend to look forward to what's to come with great excitement and delight, end quote. Planning for a vacation allows you to anticipate all of the good times ahead without all of the baggage, literal and figurative, associated with an actual vacation. You get to dream about the places you'll visit, sights you'll see, and food you'll eat. Your upcoming vacation, at least in your mind's eye, is an idyllic experience during the planning process. And it's a process that the whole family can be a part of and derive happiness from. One added benefit Planning well in advance helps reduce the stress associated with last-minute vacation scramble. Tip, when it comes to planning a family vacation, don't merely tell your kids what you'll be doing. Allow them to participate. Invite everyone in the family to identify one thing that they want to do, see, and eat while on vacation and watch anticipation turn into excitement for what lies ahead. Plan peak moments during vacation. As is true in all of life's experiences, not all moments are created equal on vacation. Daniel Kahneman, a Princeton psychologist and Nobel laureate, has founded that people tend to evaluate experiences such as vacations not based on the totality of circumstances, but rather on peak moments, good or bad, that stood out. Moreover, things that happen at the end of an experience are most memorable. Kahneman described this phenomenon as the peak end rule. What this means in practical terms is that after a family vacation to Disney World, for example, you likely won't reminisce about the trip based on the time you spent waiting in line or eating mouse-shaped personal pizzas, but rather you'll focus on your first ride on Space Mountain and when your daughter got to meet Elsa and Anna. These peak moments leave an impact 
and form the most lasting memories. Tip, some peak moments happen spontaneously. You can't necessarily plan for a dolphin sighting or epic sunset, but don't leave things completely to chance. During your vacation planning process, make sure to schedule time, especially at the tail end of your trip, for activities that will result in a positive experience, a wonderful meal, an outdoor adventure, or a special gathering with friends and family that will create a residue of happiness and positive memories that will last long after the vacation ends. Vacation experiences, even seemingly negative ones, get better over time. Last week, I attended a conference in New Orleans and Heather flew down on Wednesday to meet me while our kids stayed home with my mom. We had an enjoyable and relaxing getaway. However, our flight home was Saturday morning and when we touched down at Chicago O'Hare to catch our connecting flight to Traverse City, we learned that our flight was canceled due to the storm. American Airlines told us that the earliest they could get us back was Monday. While Heather was trying to retrieve our luggage, I rented a car because we decided to drive home. During the process, we met a woman whose flight to Traverse City also got canceled, and she asked if she could hitch a ride with us. To be honest, I wasn't wild about the idea. It had already been a long day of travel, and I didn't necessarily want to involve someone else in what turned out to be a seven-hour, white-knuckled drive home through ice and snow. But Heather talked some sense into me, and the three of us set off on a long drive up north. It ended up being a rough drive, but in retrospect and unexpectedly, is one of the highlights of the trip. The woman we drove home was on her way to see her grandkids and was extremely grateful to tag along. We shared laughs and more than a few nervous moments on the icy roads. While the moment-to-moment experience was not always pleasant, we have a very favorable impression of it in the rearview mirror. There's a reason for this, as research has shown that experiences, even unpleasant ones, often give us pleasure in retrospect through the memories we have and the stories we tell. Perhaps you've had a similar experience while traveling, such as getting lost or caught in the rain while camping that seemed like a disaster at the time, but you now look back on with laughter and fondness. The point is that by investing in new experiences, even if things don't go the way you planned, your memories and impressions of the experience will get better with time. Contrast this with the buyer's remorse that is commonly felt after buying new objects. Uncertainty is a byproduct of trying new things and it often leads to unexpected happiness. Tip, the next time you're traveling and incidental annoyances, disturbances, and distractions pop up, keep in mind that when things don't go as planned, you may be in the midst of one of the best parts of an unexpected adventure. You just listened to the post titled, The Happiest Moments of Vacation May Not Be What You Think by Jay Harrington of lifeandwhim.com. And thank you to Jay for the article. Towards the end, he talked about how sometimes really unpleasant experiences can actually give us pleasure in retrospect because they turn into stories we share or even in our memories, we can laugh at it. It's kind of crazy to think about. It reminds me of the movie, it's a classic movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles which tells the story of a marketing exec who has to travel during Thanksgiving to get home to Chicago, I believe, O'Hare Airport, which was mentioned in this article. He got delayed there too. And actually, you know what? That's the same airport that my business partner, Lee, and I always get delayed through, so be careful with Chicago. But anyway, the marketing exec goes through disaster after disaster with another person. And near the end, when he's reminiscing and having flashbacks, he can actually laugh at some of the crazy moments that were definitely not fun at the time, quite the opposite. It's an old John Hughes movie that you might enjoy around the holidays if you haven't seen it. It's a favorite of my family. Again, that's planes, trains, and automobiles. So this idea of new experiences being good things, even if in the moment they're not the best, is probably something we've all experienced in some way. And this is a topic Jay likes to write about. I've narrated a couple of articles that talk about first moments and things like that. If you search Optimal Living Daily and the last name Harrington, you can hear a lot more about this kind of stuff. Another one I liked from him was episode 1370, almost exactly two years ago. I still remember that article. But I'll leave it there for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.